Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the righteous, the one who has saved us, redeemed us, delivered us, and set us free. Oh, we just give him praise today, glory today, honor today, for he is keeping us, preserving us, and sustaining us from all evil. Glory be to God. You know, Jesus is the only true keeper. Oh, glory to God. He's the only one that can keep us. Oh, glory be to God. Preserve us and sustain us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And the Bible says in Hebrews 7, verse 25, all that come to God through Jesus. What does he do? He saves them to the uttermost. Oh, he saves you from the power of sin. He saves you from the power of sickness and disease. He saves you from the power of worry and fear. He saves you from the power of lack, insufficiency, and need. All that come to God through Jesus, he saves to the uttermost, completely, entirely, and wholly. He don't leave nothing else left for the devil. Hallelujah. He saves you to the uttermost. Glory be to God. And how does he do it? The Bible tells us he does it through his word. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 107 verse 20, he sent his word and he healed us and delivered us from all our destruction. Oh, glory to God. It ain't nothing that you need saving from. It ain't no destructive force of the enemy that has laid siege upon your life that this word won't deliver you from. Glory be to God. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Woo! Glory be to God. Free from all satanic oppression, all satanic affliction, free from worry, anxiety, depression, poverty, lack, sickness, disease. The Lord wants you free. You're the Lord's free people. Amen. And when you got born again, the spirit of God, that same spirit that he used to raise Jesus from the dead, according to Romans chapter eight, verse 11, if it dwelleth in you, he quickens, he quickens, he quickens your mortal body. Glory be to God. Amen. And the Bible says, amen, that the spirit Amen, dwells in us and it testifies to us. According to Romans chapter 8, 15 and 16, he testifies, bears witness that we're children of the most high God. Mm. And he didn't just leave us now. Amen, glory to God. He committed all that he'll do to the Holy Spirit and he put his spirit in us at the new birth. Amen. For by one spirit are you all baptized into one body. And we've been made to drink of that same spirit. According to 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, that same spirit that God used to raise Jesus from the dead, that same spirit that he anointed him with power. Amen. And he went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. That same spirit is in us. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Woo! Glory be to God. The greater one, greater than sickness, greater than disease, greater than worry, greater than fear, greater than oppression, greater than lack, greater than insufficiency and need. The greater one, where is he at? He's in you if you're born again. He's in you. Amen. Glory to God. Now, if you ain't born again, you don't have this spirit in you. Amen. And the devil, amen, he can just have roughshod over you. He don't have to answer to nobody. Mm. But when Jesus get in you, he put his spirit in you. Woo. Glory to God. Amen. 
And the devil had to answer, had to bow. Woo, glory to God. He recognized those who belong to the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. It's certain things he can't do to them. <laughs> glory be to God. So if you're not born again, if you're not saved, amen, you need to get born again right now. I said to be saved is to be safe. And to be unsaved is to be unsafe. Woo, glory to God. If you want to be safe, you got to get saved. Amen. Glory to God. Look there with me. I know we just got on the line, but woo, this word encounter hour. This is the time that God has ordained for us to have an encounter with him through the word. Woo, glory. We're going to run everything we dealing with, everything we facing, every oppressing, everything that's opposing us. We're going to run it into Jesus. We're going to run it into the word. It's going to have a collision with the word. Woo, glory be to God. See, quit running it into your own opinion, how you think, how you feel, what happened to you, what they did to you. No, run it into Jesus. Run it into the word. Let it have a collision with the word. Woo! Glory be to God. Everything that collided with the word, everything that got ran into the word, bowed and surrendered. Woo! It was overcome. Amen. Remember in Matthew chapter 4, verse, verse 4, 7, and 10. Remember when the devil tempted Jesus three times in the in the wheel? Glory to God. And when you run that situation into the word, that word chop it up. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, it cut it up. Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to get born again. And then see, some of you, you're saved, but you're not sure of your salvation. Amen. Your salvation is it's not credible to you. That just simply means that you've fallen and you need to be restored. Mm. Glory to God. So those of you who are not saved, amen, you need to get saved. And those of you who have fallen, you need to get restored. Mm. And the Lord want to do both of those right now. He want to save those who are not saved and he want to restore those who have fallen. Well, glory to God. That's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, amen, verse 10. He said, I came to seek and save that which is lost. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He's committed to your good. Amen. And he wants you in his family. Woo, glory to God. God wants to be your father. He don't just want to be God. He want to be father God. See, when he God, he judge, lawgiver, condemner. But then when he get to be your father, woo, glory be to God. He get to do more for you. You in his family. He put his spirit in you. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God want to put this liberty in you. Woo! But he can't get in you, amen, unless you get born again. And he can't save you, restore you without your consent. Mm. He got to have your consent. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch this. Look here with me to Hebrews. Go get your Bible while you're getting your Bible. Get your pen and a notepad so you can follow along with us as we refer to Scripture. You can write these Scripture references down. And in days to come, you can go back over. Amen. You know, the Lord spoke something to me. He said, son, he said, the process of learning how to receive the blessing is greater than the blessing itself. It's greater than the blessing you receive. And I thought about that because many people, they're married to the blessing, but dating the process of how to receive it. Mm. Now, you got to remember, you're dealing with a devil who came to steal, kill, and destroy. So he's trying to get something you already received or you already have. Amen. And if you don't know how, to, if, if you didn't learn how to receive that blessing, then he can steal it from you and you don't know how to defend it and get it back. Hmm. Glory to God. So the process of receiving a blessing, learning the process of how to receive the blessing is greater than the blessing that you received. Why? Because you can repeat the process. You can defend the blessing and you can help others get blessed. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So I started paying attention to the process of how to receive it. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Now watch this. Notice in Hebrews chapter 3. Let's go there. Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. Let's go to verse 3. Now notice what the Bible said in verse 3. It says, how shall we escape? How shall we escape? What? How shall we escape what? The devil who came to steal, kill, and destroy. How shall we escape any day of adversity? How shall we escape the situations, the tests, and trials of life? How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Amen. Glory to God. See, and the way people, you may be saying, I ain't neglected that. Well, the way people really neglect things, this salvation, it's not in the way you think, but the way you neglect it is three ways. Number one, amen, lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How did they end up with lack of knowledge? Hosea 4 verse 6, they rejected it. See, they didn't put no value on it. Mm. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two. Amen. They neglect. Amen. This great salvation by, by looking or depending on their own strength and ability. Ooh. Did y'all hear that? Depending on their own strength and ability. Amen. No, 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 no. no. Go yo, here with me to Psalms 49. Boy, this is the Holy Ghost, y'all. Man, I'm telling you, we've been praying, up, fasting all day. Woo, we lit up, man. I'm telling you, close. the Holy Ghost done lit us up today. On the prayer line this morning, it was upwards of 20 people praying, 20 saints on that prayer line this morning, praying, rocking that thing. Woo, bringing heaven to earth. Woo, glory be to God, securing God's attention and intervention. Woo, glory to God. We were rocking on that prayer line this morning. Woo, glory. If you ain't been on that prayer line, get on that prayer line. Woo, get your supply of strength, the anointing, the presence of God. Amen. First thing in the morning. Woo, settle your case with the word of God. Woo, woo, woo. Glory to God. The Bible said this is the day that the Lord has made. We going to rejoice and be glad in it. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Now, Amen. They depend on their own strength and on their own ability. Amen. That's how they neglect their salvation. Watch this. Notice in Psalms 49, look at verse 6. They that trust in their own wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. Can you see this? These people got to depend on their own strength, their own resources, and their own ability. And they neglected this great salvation that God provided for them in Christ that answers everything. Mm, remember, he, Hebrews 7.25, those who come to God through Jesus, watch this, he saves them to the uttermost. Mm. Amen. And see, the reason why people neglect this great salvation is because of lack of knowledge. They didn't put any value on knowledge or the word. Number two, they depended on their own strength and ability. Mm. Can you see this? I said, can you see this? They neglected it. They neglected it. And then number three, they waited for a more opportune time. Boy, this is gangster teaching right here, y'all. The Holy Joe, he just gave me them three. Whoa! Man, that scripture been Hebrews 3. Amen. Ver Hebrews 2, verse 3. They neglect. How? How should you escape if you neglect such a great salvation? He was talking to Christians. 
amen, who were neglecting the salvation that God purchased and provided for them in Christ. Salvation from sickness, salvation from disease, salvation from worry, salvation from fear, salvation from poverty, salvation from lack. Woo, glory to God. It can be neglected. Mm. Through lack of knowledge, by placing no value on the word, and by depending on your own strength, resources, and ability, it can be neglected. Woo! And then what was number three? Looking for a more opportune time. Mm, there ain't no favorable time than today. Woo! Glory to God. You don't have yesterday. You don't have tomorrow. But you got right now. Woo! That's the only thing that you are steward over is right now. Mm. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, amen, verse 1 and 2, amen, that today is the day of salvation. Now is your accepted time. Mm. Glory to God. Let's look at a brother who did that. Go, go here with me to Acts. Oh, boy, this is good tonight. Amen. Glory. Like I said, we've been praying all day, man, fasting. Amen. Glory to God. Man, we, we looking for a word, man. Glory be to God. We hunting a word because we know and of the persuasion that there's one thing that answers everything, and that's the word of God. Amen. God has put every solution to this world's crisis in his word. And that's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Mm, glory to God. Amen. Woo, glory. Everything in his life, God has put a word that pertain it in the Bible. Everything. In Acts chapter 5, verse 20, he told the disciples, go out and stand in the temple, amen, and in the synagogue and in the streets and proclaim and teach and preach all the words that pertains to this life. If it's in this life, there's a word in these scriptures that pertains to it. Mm. Glory be to God. You just got to seek ye out the book and read. Amen. Glory to God. Isaiah 34, 16. He had to tell them, seek ye out this book and read it. Don't use it as a table ornament, a furniture ornament, a place where you put, you know, things that you don't want to forget, memorials in. No, seek ye out this book and read it. Engage it. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Now, look here with me to Acts 24. Uh, that, that, that was a, a, a man, amen, his name was Festus, amen, and, uh, and, he, and Paul was, you know, he was being persecuted in prison, and, and Festus was the governor, and he had charge over Paul, so he wanted to hear Paul pertaining to his faith in Christ. He had an interest in being saved, amen. Now, notice what the Bible says, amen, uh, uh, uh. Um, and, and the Bible says in, in, in Acts 24, verse 24, and after certain days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul. He sent for Paul. Now, why did he send for Paul? And heard him concerning his faith in Christ. See, he wanted to hear how to get saved. Amen. But watch this. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, go your way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Are you seeing this? He neglected his day of salvation by looking for a more favorable time. He put it off. Mm. Can you see this today? And many Christians are neglecting their day of salvation, amen, by being ignorant of the word and not putting any value on the word, thinking that they can solve their challenges apart from the word, which they can't, 
All the devil is doing is fattening you up for the slaughter. Just like a farmer feeding them pigs. Hey Amen. They just snorking <laughs> and, and they just eating and eating and eating, not knowing that he going to load them up on that trailer truck and take them off to the slaughterhouse. And that's what the enemy doing. Hey Amen. He, he letting, you know, he unscrewing the screw, letting you think everything okay not to get in the word, not to pray, not to go to church. Hey Amen. He just fattening you up for the slaughter. Hmm. Trying to get you to solve your problems without the word. Mm. Thinking you can, you, you know, can, 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 can deal with it in your own strength, in your own ability, with your own resources. Mm. And then getting you to put it off to another time. I'll straighten up next month. I'll get it right next week. Ooh. How shall we escape if we neglect? Such a salvation as this. Oh, boy, this is a good warning to us, y'all. I know a lot of people don't like sound teaching no more. Amen. The Bible told us it's going to come a day where people, amen, going to have itching ears. Amen. Not able to endure sound doctrine. Where is that at? Where is that at, Holy Ghost? Help us tonight. This word encounter night. I, I trust y'all got your Bibles. Listen to me now. Don't turn me off. Amen. This is a good word. You know it. Your conscience testifying to it. Amen. Glory to God. See, you know, it's one thing to appeal to your hopes and fears. It's another thing to appeal uh, uh, to reward and 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 applaud. Uh, 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 you know those kind of things, credentials. But it's another thing to appeal to your conscience and convictions. That's what I want tonight. I want, I want that conscious. I want them convictions because that's the real you. That's where the real you at. Mm. I want to appeal to it because we only got one time in the earth. We, we don't have a spare time down here. Hey, man, let's make the best of it. Woo, let's glorify Jesus with this space we got in the earth. Woo, glory to God. Let's leave a testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord and he rule and reign and what he say is right. Woo glory be to God. Amen. Now, watch this. Notice here in, in, in uh, 1 Timothy, y'all there, amen, 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 4, I think it's, uh, no, no, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, that's where it is. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, or is it 2 Timothy chapter 4? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Paul talking to Timothy. Verse 2. He said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. See, people, they want the exhortation part, but they don't want to reprove. And the rebuke part. I remember the Lord spoke this to me in 2014. This I was in the trouble of my life. Man, I was in the lion's den for real. I mean, I was being oppressed, persecuted on every side. And the Lord spoke this to me. He said, son, he said, until you let me correct you, I can't direct you. Woo! He said, I love those who let me correct them. He said, I deal with them like a father Woo! and like a son. Woo! Glory be to God. He said, it'll yield to you the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Woo! He said, it don't seem good at the present time. He said, but afterwards, afterwards, woo, it pay rich dividends. Woo! It's going to yield to you the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Woo, glory. He said, correction is just like medicine. He said, it don't taste good, but the effects are wonderful. He said, so don't be concerned with the taste, how it feel. Woo, 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 how it make you look. Woo, 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 but be concerned with the effects. You don't take medicine for the taste. You take it for the effects. Woo, 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 woo. glory be to God. Amen. So he said, if you let me correct you, I can direct you. Mm. So I started looking at correction different. I started seeing correction as a demonstration of his love. Mm. I started looking at it like medicine. I don't care about how the feeling or the taste. 
I care about the effects. Woo, glory be to God. So if you get in this word or in ministries around a mentor or a minister and they ain't correcting you, man, it's something you may need to pray about that. All the time exhorting you, encouraging you. Man, forget them nine ladies and Tussie Rose and Kool-Aid when I need some solid food to grow up on. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. It's a time for the now ladies, the honey bun and the tussy roll, but it ain't supposed to replace, amen, the solid food. Mm. Glory to God. And this solid food, notice the order that Paul told Timothy in preaching the word. He said, rebuke, notice, reprove, and then he put the exhortation on the end of it. Just like a diet. You know, the word is like a diet because Jesus said, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, think about it. When you go in the restaurant, when do they offer you dessert? Before or after you eat? It's normally after you eat. What if the waiter came up and said, what kind of dessert y'all want? And you just sat down. You're going to look at that waiter like, man, did they train you right? Well, that's how people go to church, looking for dessert. Mm. Ooh. Well, they should be looking for the solid food. Amen. The order of God is to get this word in you because he can't direct us until he correct us. And that's why he told Timothy, this is the order of preaching the word. Rebuke, reprove, amen, with, with and exhort. Encourage them after this. Woo, not before. Don't give them the dessert first. Amen, give them the solid food. Amen. <laughs> Woo! And then they get to that dessert portion. Woo! Glory to God. And they've ex experienced, they've enjoyed the process of feeding on the word of God. Why? Because it's taken hold on them. It's reproduced Jesus in them. Mm. It's provided them solutions and answers and a way of escape out of all their situations. Glory to God. Now the Lord got a testimony. Amen. Are y'all seeing this tonight? Amen. Look at this. Notice, he said, Reprove, re reprove preach the gospel. Look there in verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Woo! That's why I like, amen, my friend Pastor Scales. Amen. I remember, you know, um, when I was, uh, you know, single. And I was having trouble, man, you know, just with them girls, you know, and they're just on the job and, you know, and just wobbling a little bit. And and I prayed and the, and the Lord said, you need some accountability. And I'm, you know, I'm staying by myself in my, in my own uh, 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 duplex. And he said, you need some accountability. He said, get past the scales, your dough key and tell him to come over here at least once or twice unannounced every week. And he said, uh, and, and that'll, that'll help you straighten up. Woo! <laughs> Man, I gave him my dough game, came over there every day almost. Amen. Late at night, early in the morning. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Can you see this today? Amen. Jesus want to reproduce himself in and through you. He want to turn your test into a testimony, your trial into a triumph. He want to be glorified in how you come out of what you in. Mm. The Bible says, and I know some of you, you dealing with some horrific challenges, but all you need is a word. Well, glory be to God. That's it. Now notice, preach the word, be in seat, be instant, in season, out of season. Notice what he said in verse 2. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See, if ain't no reproof, correction, instruction in the doctrine, it ain't doctrine. Amen. Verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He talking about the church, y'all. He ain't talking about the world. He's talking to a pastor concerning the flock. He said the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. 
Sound doctrine always got some correction and instruction in it. It's always showing you what to do. And I know a lot of this preaching we hear today telling you you ain't got to do nothing. It ain't a gospel of performance. Man, listen. Faith always carry a work with it. Mm. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 17 through 19, faith without works is dead. Amen. They asked Jesus in John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29, what must we do to do the works of God? And watch what Jesus said. Believe. Believe upon him who he sent. This is a work. Believing is a work. Amen. What does the work of believing consist of? Getting in the word. Laboring in the word. 2 Timothy 5 verse 5, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to show yourself approved. A workman, a workman, a workman, a workman, a laborer, a laborer in the word. Woo! Amen. Glory to God. He's showing himself approved. Amen. Not being ashamed. Woo! He's a workman. Woo, glory to God. He's laboring in the word. He's, he's letting the word facilitate faith in him, confidence in him, trust in him. Woo, glory to God. Are you seeing this today? So faith is a laboring in the word. It's a laboring in how you think. Amen. You have to manage, facilitate, cipher, judge, censor, discern, approve the thoughts you think. You can't just think when you at work, you 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 got to, amen, be watchful, alert, attentive. Amen. You take a workman on an assembly line. His part is to, his job is to put the doors on the cars. Say for instance, if he ain't paying attention, he's looking at his phone when it come time for him to put on them doors. Amen. Can you see this? So you that's how it is in your thoughts. Amen. Glory to God when the Lord is speaking to you and your thoughts on something else other than what it's supposed to be on. Amen. You're going to miss something. Amen. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 verse 8, think on things that are true, just, pure, lovely, honest, and of a good report. If God catch your thinking right, amen, you will hear him speaking right. Mm. Glory to God. The Bible says in Acts 10, verse 17 through 19, Peter, amen, he was up on the rooftop praying, amen, and the Lord descended a sheet, amen, had all manner of four kinds of beasts on it, and he, in a voice came, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. No, he said, not so, nothing common or unclean has been in my mouth, and the Lord spoke to him, and don't call that common or unclean, which I have cleansed, and the Bible said in Acts chapter 10, verse 19, why he thought on the vision, why he thought on the vision, why he thought on the vision, the Holy Spirit said something to him. Mm. So the reason why the Holy Spirit ain't saying nothing to a lot of people is because their thinking is off. Mm. They're not regulating their thoughts. I often say this, if you want your prayers answered, you need to watch what you say after you pray. Mm. Amen. So if you're not watching what you're saying after you pray, amen, then your prayers are not sincere. Hmm. Glory to God. Woo! 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 Amen. Watch this. Jesus prayed for Peter in Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you and sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Woo! It's some people, the enemy, some relatives, your children, the enemy won't be able to take them out, destroy them oppress them, afflict them. Why? Because you pray for them. Mm. Glory to God. Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Woo! And he said, and when you are converted, woo, watch how Jesus, watch how Jesus talk out that he prayed for Peter. And when you are converted, not if you are converted, but when you are converted, you're going to strengthen your brothers. 
Oh, when you believe in what you pray, you watch what you say after you pray. You make sure what you say after you pray is lined up with your conversation with God. Oh, you don't pray for your children. Lord, defend, protect, favor, increase my children. Amen. I thank you that my children, amen, glory to God, are taught of you. Amen. Great is their peace. Amen. According to Isaiah 53, amen, verse verse. 13 and 14. Amen. Amen. They are established in righteousness. Amen. They are far from oppression, terror, and fear. It won't come near them. Verse 17, no weapon formed against my children to prosper. Every tongue that rises up against them in judgment will be condemned. This is my heritage. My righteousness is of you, and I'm your servant, and it's settled in Jesus' name. And then get at work in the break room around your unrenewed mind, carnal friends. I don't know what's going on with my children. Let me call home and check on them devils. Man, what an insult. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 5, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men freely and liberally and upbraideth it not. But let him ask in faith, nothing doubting. For he that doubted is like a wave of the sea tossed to and from. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord. Why? Because he's unstable. He don't watch what he say after he pray. Woo! Boy, that's revelation right there. Woo! Glory be to God. See, we're talking about neglecting this salvation. Neglecting this salvation. Hey, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Whew. How great is it? Well, he tells us, amen, in, in Hebrews 7, 25, all that come to God through Jesus, what do he do? He saved them to the uttermost. Amen. <laughs> Entirely, completely, and wholly. Woo, glory to God. But how can we escape if we neglect it? How do we neglect it? We neglect it by lack of knowledge or, or not valuing the word. Number two, we neglect it by depending on our own strength and ability, our own resources. And number three, amen, we look for a more favorable time when the Bible said today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Woo! Glory be to God. Oh, boy, this is good, good, good teaching tonight. Amen. Glory to God. I done showed you through the word. Amen. Now, I want to show you tonight. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord spoke something to me earlier, and I'm so glad he let me finish that so I could get to it. Amen. Glory to God. And this is what he told me. He said to tell the people that there is nothing too hard Nothing too difficult for him. Mm. He said, tell the people that I am the God who reverses the irreversible. Oh, there may be something that has plagued you for years. Amen. It doesn't matter how difficult or hard or strenuous it is. Woo! The God who reverses the irreversible has come to your aid. Good news, good news, good news. The God who reverses the irreversible, he's for you. I said he's for you. How do you know Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32? If God be for me, who can be against me? Woo! How do I know he for me? Verse 32, he did not withhold or spare his own son but he delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. Woo, glory. If Jesus didn't withhold, if God didn't withhold Jesus, his son from us, while we were yet sinners, according to Romans chapter five, verse eight, he commended his love towards us while we were yet sinners. 
Woo, Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, if he died for the ungodly, why we were opposing him, persecuting him, cursing him, using his name in vain. If he died and gave up his son for us while we were like that, how much more will he do for us now that we're in his family? Woo, the Bible informs us if a natural parent knows how to give good things to their children, how much more? Shall our heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? James chapter 1 verse 17, every good gift, every perfect gift, oh, is salvation good? Is healing good? Oh, is breakthrough blessings good? Is promotion good? Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from the father. You don't have to think it up. Amen. You don't have to conjure it up. Oh, just let it come down from the father of lights in whom there's no verbiness, neither shadow of turning. Woo! God is committed to your good. Why? Because he loves you in Christ. And the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves you with an eternal love. He loves you with an unconditional love. He loves you with an uncompromising love. God ain't gonna let nothing mess up his love for you, but his love for you can mess up what you're going through. Woo! <laughs> Praise God. Paul said, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. For that's good news. I said, that's good news. I said, that's good news. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I feel like singing a song or something, praising him right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. You know the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus Jesus, 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 glory to the King. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Now, the God who reverses the irreversible, he's for you. Amen. Nothing is too hard for him. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, I'm the Lord God who made the heavens, the earth, and all that is within them is by my great power. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for me. Woo, glory. He's the God of all flesh. Jeremiah 32, 17. He's the God of all your flesh. Every fiber of your flesh. He's the God of all your flesh. And there is nothing too hard for him. Well, glory to God. I said he's the God that reverses the irreversible. And there's nothing too difficult, nothing too hard for him to reverse. Amen. Let's look at a few scriptures of him doing that. Go with me to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, I want to stir up your faith, man. Look, what you're facing is just the fact. It's not the truth. Amen. The truth can set you free from that fact. Woo, glory to God. Facts can change, but the truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Woo, glory to God. All of God's works are done in truth. Psalms 33 verse 4, all of his works are done in truth. Because truth changes facts. Woo, glory to God. And Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the, not a truth, the truth. Woo, glory be to God. And then he said in John chapter 6, verse 37, all that come to me, in no way will I turn them back. Woo, all that come to the truth, Woo, they get delivered from their facts. All that come to the truth, amen, get everything that's irreversible reversed. Woo, glory to God. Ah, look here, notice in Luke chapter 7. Amen. Woo, where is that at? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Give me that scripture. Verse 11. 
Remember now, the God who reverses the irreversible. It may seem like, I'm telling you, I've, I've been in that situation. 10 federal indictments against me, the federal government. Oh, you know, when they get, boy, when they get you in their lines then and in their grips and Sophia, it's over for you. All of them dismissed. All 10 of them fell to the ground, dismissed by three free lawyers. Woo! Woo! <laughs> One of them a federal judge now. I get to go up in his courtroom and praise God with him and thank God with him. And, and, and help him to see, amen, that the good he made happen for me. God is committed to make that good happen for him. Whew. Glory to God. Woo! Man, I'm telling you, nothing is too hard for him. Nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult or hard for him. Get that in your spirit. He's the God that reverses the irreversible, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he was reversing the irreversible yesterday, he's reversing the irreversible today. And if he was reversing the irreversible today, he's reversing the irreversible tomorrow. He just needs you to cooperate and participate with him. Woo! And we're going to show you how to do that. Now, notice. Here it is. Amen. They were having a funeral. Amen. The, the only son of, of, of only child of this mother had passed. They carried him to the burial. Woo! Glory to God. And the Bible said in verse 11, and it came to pass, Luke 7, verse 11, and it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now, when he had come to name at the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother. And she was a widow and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he said he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. And he came and touched the brow. Woo, glory. And they that bear stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto you, arise. And the Bible said in verse 15, and he that was dead, what did he do? He sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother. He reversed the irreversible. Woo, glory to God. What was the responsibility of this woman? There it is. In verse 13, stop weeping. Stop acting like it's over. Woo. <laughs> I ain't never saw that until the Lord just showed it to me. He got to get you to cooperate and participate with him. When he promised you by, your, by his stripes you healed, you got to stop weeping. When he tell you he the Lord, amen, and, 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 and he the Lord, your shepherd, and you shall not want, you got to quit wanting. Woo! You got to start acting like he that, what he said he is. And you got to give him thanks and give him praise that he is who he is. And what he said is the truth. Woo! Glory. He told us, stop weeping. Quit acting like that. I'm the God that reverses the irreversible and nothing is too difficult or hard for me and I'm for you. Whew. Woo! Hey! <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen? Here it is, another situation. Go there with me to Luke chapter 8. Let's stay over in Luke chapter 8. Where that blind, where that, where that uh, J. Iris boy at? The woman with the issue of blood. Y'all remember her? It's been all she had, nothing better, but it rather grew worse. She heard of Jesus. Woo, he reversed the irreversible. Amen. And so here it is, J. Iris. He had a, a daughter at the point of death, girlfriend to die. He came to Jesus. Master, come lay your hands on my daughter and she'll live. And while he was on the way over there, the woman with the issue of blood, she had to collect her healing. And while she was telling him all the truth, some people came. 
And they and they said, uh, they said to him, Amen. Notice what they said to him. Uh in in uh uh in in verse 49. In verse 49, and why he yet arrays there cometh from the ruler of the synagogue house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master no more. See, they tell him, go on, give up, quit. It's over. It can't be reversed. But watch what Jesus said, verse 50. When Jesus heard it, he answered and said, fear not. Fear not. Believe only. And she shall be made whole. See, he got something to do. He gave him some responsibility. What did he give him to do? Believe. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. And you can keep reading. He reversed the irreversible. Whew, glory be to God. Ooh, are y'all seeing this today? We're going to keep building on this, y'all. We're going to, for the next several weeks, the Lord told me to teach it until you get it in your spirit. Amen, that he's the God who reverses the irreversible and there is nothing too difficult or hard for him and he is for you. Mm, nothing can change him being for you. Now they could in the Old Testament, but not in the New. He'll always be for you. Man, when Jesus died on that cross and he, 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 he shed that blood, man, and he went to heaven, and seated at the throne of God, man, he making intercession for you right there. Woo, he pleading your case. And God always hear Jesus. And he always for you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Oh, Father, the God who reverses the irreversible, the God who's nothing too hard or difficult for, the God who is for us, Father God, Jesus, reverse the irreversible cases. Tonight, every irreversible case, whether it be sickness, disease, poverty or lack, worry or fear, family issues, career issues, business issues, oh God, reverse it tonight. Ooh, be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your irreversible case reversed tonight. I said it's reversed tonight. Woo, it's turning in your favor. It's turning in your favor. It's turning in your favor. Woo, the next news you hear. Is going to be that of a good report, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, powerful word tonight. Amen, glory to God. I want you to, amen, share this word with some people. Get it out there to them. Help them. Amen, let them see the revelation that you're hearing and seeing. They need this kind of help, y'all. Amen, I was just in Atlanta, amen, this past weekend, and I'm telling you, hey amen, people were following me, you know, just, I mean, just, you know, was drawn, drawn to me. Hey amen. I mean, people just getting saved, prayed for, ministered to everywhere. Hey amen. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, wait, wait, wait you know, what, what, what's happening? And then the, the, the Lord told me this. Isaiah 40, 59, verse 19, he said, when the, when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. Whew. Glory to God. Oh, there's a standard for every enemy that comes rushing in your life. Oh, the spirit of the Lord has an answer, has a solution, has a way of escape. For every enemy that comes rushing in your life. Woo! When the enemy come in like a flood. 
Woo, Jesus don't leave you. He don't abandon you. He don't forsake you. He stands with you and he raises up a standard. What is that standard? The truth. Woo, what's the truth? What he did, what he said, and who he is. Woo, that's the truth. <laughs> Whoa, glory be to God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I want to say this to you. Amen. Last week we launched, amen, our vision fulfillment campaign with the Academy. We're believing for $100,000 to come in. Amen. So we can move our school to a bigger location so we can accommodate the students that are waiting, the families that are waiting to come into the academy. We already have the staff. We have five full-time teachers. We have some uh, bus driver. We have uh, before and after care providers. Amen. We, we, we are poised and positioned to minister to more students, but our facility won't let us. Amen. Glory to God. I believe that if you, amen, would ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be a part, amen, of, 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 of what you're doing in the lives of these students and families in this school. I want to be a part of giving you a voice in this next generation. I want to be a part of you redeeming the destinies of these young people. I want to be a part. Give me the resources. Give me seed to sow. And while I'm sowing, give me bread for my food. And multiply the seed that I'm sowing and increase me in the fruits of my righteousness. Oh, I believe if you'll pray that prayer, Lord, I want to be a part, amen, of advancing your kingdom in the lives of these families, these students, this school. I believe if you'll pray that, the Lord will put the resources in your hand. Like David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, amen, he, he had it in his heart to build God a house and God put the resources to do it in his hand. Jesus says, where a man treasure is, that's where his heart is. Your treasure follow your heart. If you get this in your heart, God will put the resources. Listen, my wife and I, we just contributed 10,000 to this, $10,000 to this endeavor right here. Amen. We had planned to do some things around our house, get our automobiles repaired and different things. But man, this was in our heart. Amen. Glory to God. So our treasures went towards it. Pastor Poby, a friend of mine, he's he got his own ministry in church. Amen. He heard about it. Amen. He sold 25000 amen, into the academy. Glory to God. Now for outsider and those that are within the leaders, amen, get on board with us. Partner with us in this endeavor. Amen. Amen. You know, it's horrific to hear, amen, how many kids are dropping out of school? How many kids are going into gangs, in prison, in jails? Amen. When God has given us, amen, uh, a, 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 a facility, a place of refuge for these kids to be taught and instructed. Amen. Glory and empowered. Woo, glory to God. Oh, I'm excited. What are you trading your life for? What are you trading your resources for? If it's not for the next generation, if it's not for improvement, if it's not for expansion, if it's not for growth. Woo, glory to God. We've been decreeing according to Psalms 115, verse 14. The Lord is increasing us more and more in 2024, us and our children. Let's get about our father's business. The information, amen, to sow your seed, amen. All of these resources are going to the academy, amen, to the expansion, the growth, amen, the betterment of it, amen. It's on your screen right there, amen. And like I said, I didn't know that we were going to sow 10000 I just committed it, and God brought the resources in. Amen. Glory to God. And I believe if you will commit to sow, the Lord 
amen, will bring the resources in. Amen. If you commit to sow, he'll commit to give you seed. And then he'll multiply the seed to your sowing. And then he'll increase you in the fruits of your righteousness. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. I love you so much. Don't forget, we got some things coming up here at the ministry. And we got our Bible study coming up this Thursday night. It's going to be the anointed oil service on Facebook Live. Get your oil ready. Amen. We're going to have an encounter with the Lord through the anointed oil service this Thursday night on Facebook Live. Tell all your friends, neighbor, loved ones, those who are being challenged with yokes and burdens. Amen. The anointing going to destroy them and lift them this Thursday night. Amen. Glory to God. Also, amen, refer to your Facebook page with any kind of all the upcoming announcements, things that are going on in the ministry. We got a outreach soul winning at Spring Valley Apartments here in Murfreesboro. Amen. This coming up Saturday, we're going to take the church to Spring Valley Apartments. We're going to have a full church service for them. Amen. Ooh, the lost are going to be saved. The sick are going to be healed. The poor are going to be delivered. The oppressed are going to be set free. And the backslide are going to be restored. Woo! It's going to be a powerful revival. This coming up Saturday at the Spring Valley Apartments. Please, amen, join us on Corporate Prayer 630 tomorrow. It's going to be powerful. I love you so much. And it's always our prayer, amen, on your behalf, that God's riches and best be yours.